Each day, more than 800,000 people and businesses depend on Citizens Energy Group to safely collect and treat wastewater while protecting our environment. Citizens Wastewater Collection System is composed of approximately 3,200 miles of piping, more than 63,000 manholes, and 265 lift stations, which moves wastewater from lower to higher elevations. Wastewater travels through the system and ends up at one of Citizens' two advanced wastewater treatment plants. The Belmont Advanced Wastewater Treatment Plant was commissioned on May 25, 1925. It was the first large activated sludge or biological treatment facility in the United States and was initially able to treat 90 million gallons of wastewater daily. Following several expansions and upgrades, Belmont can now treat 300 million gallons of wastewater per day. When water drains down the sink or is flushed down the toilet, it flows into the citizens' underground collection system. Until it passes through treatment, it is referred to as wastewater. From the sewer system, wastewater flows by gravity to the treatment facility, where it undergoes five phases in the treatment process, preliminary, primary, secondary, tertiary, and disinfection. Preliminary treatment starts by removing large debris with screens called trash rakes. Because Indianapolis has a combined storm and sanitary collection system, litter and discarded items can enter the wastewater system as well. The trash rakes remove these items as wastewater enters the plant. This keeps unwanted material out of our waterways and protects plant equipment from being damaged. Once through the trash rakes, wastewater is lifted into the plant by 10 Archimedes screw pumps. Each one can pump up to 30.3 million gallons of wastewater into the treatment plant every day. Once the big items have been removed, wastewater flows through bar screens. Bar screens remove smaller items, such as wrappers, rubber bands, and wipes. This is a good reminder that wipes of any kind should always be disposed of in the trash. These materials can block flow and cause wastewater to back up into the collection system. From there, wastewater enters grit tanks. Air is added to the grit tanks to cause small materials such as gravel and coffee grounds to sink, making them easier to remove. After the grit tanks, wastewater enters large, deep outdoor or primary clarifier basins, where it is slowed down so that any remaining settleable and buoyant material can be removed. Anything that settles on the bottom is called primary sludge. The material that floats to the top is called scum. Scum is composed of mostly fats, oils, and grease, which brings us to another great reminder. Never put fats, oils, and grease down the drain. Not only do they have to be specially removed during treatment, but they also can cause extensive and expensive damage to your home plumbing. Once the scum and sludge have separated, a system of chains and flights removes the material from the primary clarifiers. What remains flows through underground pipes to begin secondary treatment. In secondary treatment, smaller dissolved compounds and nutrients such as phosphorus, nitrogen, and carbon are removed. To do this, the wastewater flows through several basins that contain microorganisms. Air is constantly pumped into these basins to keep the microorganisms alive. As wastewater moves through each basin, it mixes with the microorganisms, which eat the dissolved compounds and nutrients that would otherwise pollute our waterways. Then the wastewater is lifted by a different set of Archimedes screws and pumped into one last set of secondary treatment basins. Here, more air is pumped in to kill off any remaining nutrients. Wastewater then flows to the final clarifiers, where the nutrient-eating microorganisms settle to the bottom and are removed. After the final clarifiers, wastewater is pumped through a set of sand filters that remove any remaining material. At this point, the wastewater looks clear and clean, but still contains microscopic contaminants such as bacteria, parasites, and viruses that can cause disease. These dangerous contaminants need to be destroyed through disinfection before treated water is returned to the White River. During this stage, wastewater passes through an ultraviolet light disinfection system. When wet weather conditions increase flow above 150 million gallons per day, the additional wastewater passes through a chlorine disinfection system. After spending almost 12 hours in our treatment process, the newly cleaned water is discharged into the White River. 
Citizens is committed to ensuring our wastewater facilities are continuously updated and expanded to meet stringent industry regulations and the needs of central Indiana's growing population.